More on uh, what these reforms mean for, for the banking industry and for the markets. We're joined by Alistair Heath, editor at City AM. And our guest host today for the full hour is Alpesh Patel, a principal at Profinium Partners. Do send your emails through to these gentlemen, Strictly Money at CNBC.com. Welcome to you both. Um, okay. Alistair, uh -huh. I'm going to start with you because yes. I know that you, uh, you wrote something up in, in uh, City AM this morning. Um, by and large, you seem to be quite positive on Basel III. Yes, I'm going to say two cheers for Basel III. In other words, I think it's quite good. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, it could have been much worse. Or it's done quite in quite a sensible way. I think with those kinds of level of capital, um, a lot of the consequences of the crisis and the recession would have been avoided. I think would have had far fewer bailouts or even no bailouts. So I think it's much better. Banks need to hold much more capital. But I think it's being done in a reasonably good way and there's enough lead time for those banks in, in those countries that have don't have enough capital. So on balance I'm reasonably happy about it. I mean, yes, it might mean more expensive credit, yeah. but so be it. Uh, but the problem is maybe precisely the lead time that there is there's too much lead time. If we're looking ten years uh, a ten year time frame in which the banks you know, are yeah, able to, to get this money. A lot could happen in 10 years. In so many ways, it's so irrelevant, partly because crashes tend not to repeat themselves in the same manner. So we're fighting the last battle. We need to protect ourselves against what just happened. Uh, but in terms of protecting us in the future, the next crash will not arise out of these reasons, regardless of, of uh, Basel III. And the other problem with uh, this is, is that the regulators have shown uh, uh, quite a degree of leniency time and time again, whether it's been evaluating the banks and stress testing them or in terms of tightening uh, capital adequacy requirements. They don't want to make the really tough decisions because they're too afraid of spooking the markets. So again, in that regard, yes, it sends a relatively positive signal. It uh, gives another excuse for us to continue this rally. Um, I've been talking with previous guests this morning about the, the, the need for quick liquidity, whether it does anything to stem those fears are to encourage uh, liquidity in, in markets and, and also uh, uh, whether or not it really does anything to, to stem fears on systemic risk and some of the big international global companies that are so, so linked. Well, it gives the banks another excuse not to lend because they'll say, well, we need to preserve more capital. Uh, and in terms of systemic risk, as I just mentioned, we're not going to have the same, uh, same cause of, a, uh, of the next crash. The problem is we don't know what the cause of the next crash will be. We can speculate, but it won't be what's just happened, and it won't be because of uh, uh, what's uh, been announced uh, over the weekend. Okay. That is true, yep. but any, any crash that leads to a significant decline in asset values, at least you have a buffer. So I think, of course, we don't know what the next crash is going to be. But if we have another crash, then at least if they've got more capital, I think we'll be better off. Secondly, in the case of lending, given that the big UK banks, for example, already have more capital than these uh, rules require, I suspect it won't mean less lending when it comes to the UK, at least. Are you seeing the services largely outside of the UK, the demand being largely outside the UK, or within the UK? Because it would be quite troublesome if actually it's not showing any indication of UK growth. No, I think it's coming back in the UK, I think, uh, but what we've seen particularly in the last 12 months, and this speaks to the uh, resilience and entrepreneurship of many of our member companies, is that they've looked elsewhere for their growth as well, so particularly in continental Europe but also in the Middle East and, and Asia. Uh, British UK-based consulting has a very high reputation and they've managed to grow their businesses. How dependent is your sector on the public sector? So therefore, you know, when the cuts start to kick in and so on, will they have diversified enough internationally and, and so on to compensate for well, that? Well, there undoubtedly it will be tough, particularly for firms that have specialised in the public sector, no doubt about that. Uh, but what, you know, people have had warning of this, and what we've seen is a quite a lot of redeployment into other work, uh, and, and the recovery in the financial services in particular, uh, which means that we think, and it's obviously it's going to be tricky times, so that will, the, the, the fall in public sector will be offset by recovery elsewhere. And if you look at our projections, we asked our members what do they expect for the second half of this year. Uh, to a company, they're all saying they expect further growth in the private sector uh, for their services. And are you seeing any signs of relocation of some of the British consultants? I'm thinking here in terms of are we going to have some kind of brain drain of the best British management talent being poached and relocated in the Middle East and the Far East? Well, consultancies are very mobile, you're quite right. And um, when I try to contact my leading members, you know, 
I cannot predict which part of the world they're going to be in. And, mm. and, uh, uh, but they do value the UK as a base. I think it's important to say that. Uh, it is under pressure for tax reasons and for regulatory reasons. But they, uh, they do value the reputation of London and the UK as a base for professional services. And they want to see that maintained. And, and growth SMEs versus non-SMEs. How's the differential there? Well, it's just primarily non-SMEs where, where the client business is. Yeah. So that's, that's the, those are the big drivers of, of major management consultancy work. Yeah, yeah, as one would figure. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Alan Allen Lehman, the CEO of the Management Consultancies Association.